Our next lecture is on paperweights, using basic size and basis weight of paper to calculate the total weight of paper needed for a job. From there, we can price out paper, but that's the next lecture, so we're not going to go into that right now. This lecture, for some reason, is always very difficult for most students to understand, so please don't be afraid to come to class and ask questions or attend office hours or online chats. If this lecture lands on a Thursday, and Thursdays are always optional, I would highly recommend coming to class anyway. We'll go through the lecture together as a group and make sure everyone's on the same page. The concept or the idea behind basic size and basis weight is usually what's confusing. How to calculate the weight of paper is actually very simple. It's just a formula you're going to write down. So with that being said, our learning goals or our objectives for this lecture are to one, identify basic sizes of paper and what basic size means, two, to define and identify basis weights of paper, three, to understand how basic size and basis weight are used to calculate paper weights, three, we're going to calculate the number of sheets needed to print a job. This goes hand in hand with our packaging and shipping weights lecture when we calculate the number out, and five, we're going to calculate the weight of paper for a job based on client specifications. So first, let's define what basic size and basis weight are. The basic size refers to the traditional size a particular type of paper is manufactured in. Coated papers, they can come in gloss, dull, satin, or there's other types that are always being brought into the market, have a different basic size than writing papers. Coated and writing are classifications of papers. So every time you hear the term 80 pound gloss text, or 80 pound or let's say 24 pound writing paper the poundage the 24 pound or the 80 pound is calculated based on the basic size it was traditionally manufactured in all calculations in regard to a specific type of paper are made based on that basic size even though we can purchase paper in many different sizes it doesn't matter what type of paper it is I can buy it in 50 different sizes it has one set basic size and the size is used to calculate everything I can't emphasize that enough so you need to memorize the basic sizes of paper we're gonna identify three groups and those three groups are the only ones you have to memorize there are types of paper commercial printing companies are manufactured at a mill they are sold through a paper company and they are distributed to printing companies Paper comes in many shapes and sizes. It is very important to know the following types of paper for our class. There are probably a hundred different types of paper, sizes, textures, etc. But these are the ones you need to memorize for our class. There are coated papers, which we identified on the previous slide. Dull, gloss, satin, etc. There are uncoated papers, called offset or opaque papers. There are bond and writing papers, which are uncoated papers that are traditionally used to print stationary type things. So if you looked at coated and uncoated papers, they might come in 70 pound, 80 pound, 100 pound paper. Bonding writing paper, even though it looks exactly the same, would come in 24 pound or 28 pound paper. And last but not least, you must know the difference between text or book weight paper and cover weight paper stocks. You don't have to be able to identify it, you just have to know that there's a difference. A text or book weight paper stock is going to be a thinner stock and it's meant to go on the inside of a book. Cover weight stocks are thicker, denser stocks that when you fold them, they don't fold as easily. They'll snap along, along the fold and they are used for the exterior of books. But what you need to know is that when you choose them off a list and you have to find the basic size of paper, you need to know if it's text, waste, text weight or book weight or if it's cover weight stock because they're different options on the list that we're about to identify. If talking about paper is making you uncomfortable and I'm talking over your head right now and you have no idea what I'm talking about, please visit the following websites. These are different types of paper that you can purchase. So I talked about on the previous slide that paper is manufactured at a mill. The mills have their own websites because they want to convince you as a graphic designer to purchase their paper. So Sappy Fine Paper is going to have different examples of coated paper, uncoated paper, bond and writing paper, and cover weight stocks. 
And so is New Page, French Paper, Nina Paper, and then Finch Fine. But if you visit the websites, you'll be able to get a better understanding of how we purchase paper. In addition, if you like free stuff, I would highly recommend visiting the next two websites I'm about to send you to. If you visit Sappy Paper, in the bottom right-hand corner, there is a link for sappysamples.com. If you register for it, you can get free stuff. They will even ship it for free. I like it because you can get paper swatch books. So if you're thinking about designing something and you want to see what different types of paper are available, you can put that in there. They have yearly calendars. They have postcards because they want to showcase their paper. What I would like you to do if you go on the website is to make sure that you request the standard books. This is standard book number five. It's on the drop down here. You can just add it to your cart. They're educational books that help you see what your options are in regard to printing and specialty features of paper. It will help you as a graphic designer broaden your horizons and see other things that you're able to do. Sappy Paper has free swag, as I'll call it, and so does New Page Paper. But New Page Paper has a separate website. It's called edlivesheer.com. Or if you go, this is the New Page website. If you go to the New Page website and click on the bottom right hand side, you can request edbooks. Whereas Sappy has a has a standard series and there's five books. New Page has a 14 set um, package that they'll send you. The only catch is that you will have to fill out this form right here 14 times in order to get all the books but it is definitely worth it if you're interested in learning about how paper can affect you as a graphic designer.